So, I welcome you all for the uh, lecture number 11 principles of compost production. So, earlier lectures we have uh, discussed about the sustainability agricultural productions and the role of organic farm, farming for sustainable agricultural productions and the key indicators of sustainable agriculture. So, this lecture will be going to the main topic a compost production as one of the inputs of organic farming. So, we will discuss this one the principles involved in compost production. So, uh, so first of all what is compost? The uh, compost uh, is a organic matter that has been decomposed and recycled as a fertilizer and as a use as a soil amendment. Compost uh, is a key ingredient of organic farming and the end products of the decomposition of organic matter that is a compost. Compost is rich in nutrients, it acts as a soil conditioner, a fertilizer, addition of uh, humus as one of the most important constituents in agricultural productions for uh, maintaining soil fertility and the soil health on long term basis so humic acids and as a natural pesticide for soil. In ecosystem compost is useful for erosion control, land reclamations, wetland constructions and as a landfill uh, cover. Compost uh, is called the gardener's gold because it is an invaluable partner in keeping the soil healthy. So, uh, as you know that humus is one of the important constituents that is used for maintaining and improving soil health for long term basis. So, by using compost it enrich the soils with humus. So, what is humus? Humus is a complex mixture of dark brown, amorphous and colloidal substance modified from the original plant tissue or synthesized by various soil organisms and is resistant to microbial decomposition. So, uh, the, the humus that is responsible for building soil physical properties, it improves the soil physical properties. If you see the properties of soil humus, humus particles become bonded to clay and other silicate surface leading to formation of soil humus complex. And the humus stores and releases soil nitrogen. So, being a uh, soil humus complex by adding organic manures or the organic matter that increases the humus content of the soils and that helps in increasing the say cotton exchange capacity or the anion exchange capacity in the soils by having higher humus contents. And humus also possesses buffering capacity that means suffer, uh, soil buffering capacity means the soil has high buffering capacity, the soil is a robust soil that means a good soil, good fertile soil, healthy soils has high buffering capacity. So, it resists to any type of changes in the properties or pH changes is, is not so easy if the soil has a high buffering capacity that means soil has high cotton and anion exchange capacity. So, having humus or having more amount of humus in soil that causes that increases the buffering capacity of soil. And the soil having higher amount of humus that absorbs pesticides and other agricultural chemicals that means if soil have higher humus as a humus soil humus complex. So, the, if there is a pesticides or the agricultural chemicals applications soil having higher amount of humus. So, those pesticide is not allowed to leach the uh, below the soils and contaminate the ground water that means, the soil having higher amount of humus content that can protect the environments from the contamination of the pesticides or the leaching of the nutrients to ground water. Ground water. And then what is composting? The composting is a natural biological process carried out under controlled aerobic conditions 
In this process, various microorganisms, including bacteria and fungi, break down uh, uh, and the organic, uh, organic matter into, into simpler or the uh, substances by presence of the bacteria and the fungi, their job is to decompose or the break down the organic residues into uh, simpler substances that is a composting. The other one composting is a nature's way of recycling. Composting biodegrades organic waste that is your food waste, manure, leaves, grasses, wood, feathers, crop residue and turn it into a valuable organic fertilizer. The effectiveness of composting process is dependent upon the environmental conditions that is uh, air contents, temperatures and the moistures of the composting beds and the materials, the uh, composting materials, organic materials and the activity of the microbial populations or the microorganisms present during the composting process. So, there are different type of composting, one is called the aerobic composting, anaerobic composting and vermi composting. Uh, aerobic composting where we have the, the composting process takes place in presence of oxygen that is a quick breakdown of organic waste during the aerobic composting. So, that needs a maintenance uh, due to the, by the turning of the organic uh, materials regularly in the composting beds. So, that you can maintain the moisture, you can maintain the temperatures uh, of the uh, uh, composting systems and and uh, this aerobic composting that needs to maintain the favorable moisture and temperature that is a proper decomposition and the early decomposition of the organic residues. And the other one is anaerobic composting. So, this composting takes place in absence of oxygen under reduced conditions so that, that takes long time for the breakdown of the organic waste and that needs less maintenance because this is done in a closed pit. And in this composting, there is a release of many toxic compounds and release of ammonia and methanes during the composting process. And the other one which will discuss in detail that is vermi composting. So, this is the most effective composting here. The maintenance of oxygen moisture for a healthy compost we do maintain in a vermi composting bed. So, the favorable or the required amount of optimum oxygen and also this uh, the temperatures and the moistures for the growth of the, the workers who are involved in composting process, they are the earthworms. So, the earthworm are added here in vermi composting process. So, their job is to degrade and decompose this organic waste to minute particles and during, during this composting process also they secrete they are the body parts that are the they are also secretes many hormones, antibiotic that helps in enriching the value of the compost. So, now we will discuss, so, so what are the, uh, the main principles involved in composting process? When you go for composting, what are the scientific principles are there? There are main 7 principles, one is CN ratio of organic residue. CN means the carbon and nitrogen ratio of the organic residues, because the quality, this, this indicates the quality of the organic residue. The residues having higher nitrogen content, they are suitable for early decompositions or degradations. The resi residue having the sorry the sorry the residue having the yes, higher nitrogen content they have the low CN ratio. So, they are more suitable for quick decompositions and the residue having uh, low CN ratio that means they have the high nitrogen content. So, they are the easily degradables quick degrad degradables and the residue having higher no, uh, N content, they have the uh, low CN ratio and the residue having low N content, they have the higher CN ratio. Those residues are less suitable for the microbial degradations because those residues take longer times having the low nitrogen and high CN ratio. In those cases, uh, the, this depends the quality of the organic residues. Suppose those uh, legume residues have the high N content, they have the very low CN ratio. So, they can be easily degraded by the uh, uh, microorganisms, but if you see the rice straws or the wheat straws, cereal crop residue or the sawdust, they have very low, uh, low N content. So, that very high CN ratio, 
so they take a long time for the decompositions then the mixing of organic materials that depends upon the residue uh, type uh, the cn ratio of the residue depends cn ratio we can we can think which organic materials should be mixed together so that we can bring bring the cn ratio to the comfortable range for the better decomposition by the microbes then size of the residue because you know if the, the if you can have the larger size residue it takes longer time for the microbial decomposition so size has to be reduced to a comfortable range so that it increases the surface area and the decomposition becomes faster then as we'll discuss the moisture and temperature in the compost bed the so what uh, what are the content uh, the quantity of moisture range of moisture and temperature should be there in compost beds so that the earthworm can uh, work better that they get a better environments for the degradation or the decomposition of the waste material then ph in the compost bed and then microorganisms and the microbial inoculants they are uh, applied to the compost bed they are really in the compost beds for the better decompositions or the quick decompositions and also the enriching the quality of the compost and finally the amendment with the rock minerals this is also one type of uh, enriching the compost with the natural minerals so depending upon the compost uh, type of compost you are making so in that case if uh, we can you can add different rock minerals so the compost can be enriched with specific elements so coming to the first one cn ratio so uh, usually the preferred the cn ratio is 30 is to uh, 30 to 40 is to 1 so cn means the carbon the the, the microorganism requires carbon for their growth and nitrogen for their protein synthesis so cn ratio of the waste materials should be 30 to 40 is to 1 uh, that's optimal for composting so if suppose in case the materials the waste materials having higher cn ratio that means greater than 40 that means it takes a longer time for composting for example the materials having higher cn ratio maybe cereal uh, straws like rice straws or wheat straws or the sawdust also so they have the very high cn ratio and the materials uh, has uh, low cn ratio suppose less than 30 in that case uh, the n uh, the n content the materials are very high in that case cn ratio is low so if there is a higher n content that means n is excess of the requirement of the microbes so there will be a loss of nitrogen through ammonia volatilization so this has been observed that about 20 to 40 percent nitrogen is lost through ammonia if your the waste materials are water hyacinths animal or the cow dung and the immature green organic materials those are having higher nitrogen contents and very low cn ratio less than 30 in that case there is a loss of nitrogen through ammonia volatilization if this is the case if cn ratio beyond the range either less than 30 or greater than 40 then we go for the mixing of organic materials so if the cn ratio is greater than 40 that means the materials contents very low or the low lower nitrogen content in that case this organic material can be mixed with materials having higher nitrogen contents so those materials having higher n content are swiss glass legume residues aquatic weeds slaughterhouse wastes can be mixed with those materials having high cn ratio so that cn ratio can be brought to the comfortable range for proper activity of the microbes the materials having very low cn ratio suppose less than 30 in that case that has a high n content then for those cases we can add dry soil around 5 to 10 percent so that so they can absorb the moisture from the materials and they can minimize the release of uh, ammonia to the atmosphere they can absorb the ammonia present in the waste materials so depending upon the waste materials or the cn ratio we can we can decide what type of organic materials should be used or the mixing of the organic materials so that the cn ratio as the the quality of the organic matter that can be uh, maintained in a comfortable range in optimum range then size of residue uh, the uh, most uh, desirable particle size is around 3 to 5 centimeter so if there is a uh, larger size of the residue so it it will go for composting only thing that it will take more time so in order to uh, reduce the time for the composting you have to make the compost quickly then we have to uh, reduce the size of the waste materials 
uh, using the like shredder is shown here. So, using this uh, shredder as a shredder, so that you can put the waste materials of different sizes and we can, we can have the waste the, the final uh, size of around uh, uh, less than 5 centimeters, uh, which is uh, very uh, optimum size for uh, preparing a good compost. Compost means the compost can be uh, made very quickly. Then moisture and temperature, uh, usually the moisture content uh, uh, varies from 50 to 60 or it can go to for the 80 percent for the aerobic composting. And the temperature, usually uh, the temperature when you go for the uh, loading of the waste materials in the compost bed, so there is a rise in temperature. Temperature may go up to 55 to 70 degrees Celsius. Uh, when the temperature rises above 40 degrees Celsius, the mesophilic microorganisms, they are replaced by thermophilic microorganisms. So, uh, so they do not survive, they do not survive uh, above 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, when the thermophilic uh, condition appears, uh, that conditions within 2 to 7 days of the start of composting process. The thermophilic bacteria, they become very active and they do give up the very temperatures. The temperature goes may be around 55 to 70 degrees Celsius and the presence of the thermophilic bacteria and because of a high temperature, the decom decomposition starts in a faster rate. So, this uh, 55 to 70 degrees Celsius or above I can say 50 degree, 55 degree Celsius is required during composting process at least for 3 days. What will happen if there is a high temperature, there are some pathogens that get killed a temperature uh, uh, beyond 55 degree Celsius or 60 degree Celsius. Like a cellular species that causes dysentery and E. coli common in Suez, uh, Suez they are killed at 60 degree Celsius. Similarly, tapeworm and hookworm, they are killed at 55 degrees Celsius. That means most of the common pathogens, so they are killed at 60 degrees Celsius. And for that, so maintenance of temperatures at least 50 degree uh, and higher 50 degree is required for at least three days in the composting process, so that the compost can be free from many pathogens. And usually, when you go on uh, loading the compost, the first two to seven days. So, the thermophilic bacteria they become active because of rising temperatures and they start on degradations and during that periods many of the pathogenic organism, organism that get killed. And next is pH, if you see the, uh, the pH uh, usually the, the earthworms or any micro they do uh, uh, live comfortably pH neutral range around 6 to 8, uh, 8 and most of the micro organ they grow under the neutral pH range 6 to 8 and there will be a drop in pH due to acid forming bacteria during the composting process. At the same time, the pH uh, may uh, increase due to formation of ammonia during the decomposition process. So, there is a auto regulation in the pH in the composting process this is maintained around 6.5 to 7.5 uh, uh, range. And then you go for the uh, uh, microorganism and the microbial inoculants because when you go for the uh, increasing the enhancing the quality of the compost with some specific uh, nutrients or, uh, or to have a early decomposition process, then you go for the inoculation of the uh, microbial uh, 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 organisms. The mesophilic bacteria, they are involved in consuming the readily degradable carbohydrates and proteins. The thermophilic bacteria, they attack on lipid and hemicellulose. The carbohydrates and the proteins, they degrade very fast. Lipid, it takes a a uh, long time and this de the decompositions also that leads to the formation of a humus in the compost that comes from the, the slow decompositions that is those uh, lipid and the hemicellulose they are very uh, hard to uh, very they are very resistant to breakdowns and after that the materials remains that that they do not break down or very resistant breakdown that comes as a humus and that leads to the physical property that leads to improving the physical properties of the soil. So, those thermophilic bacteria, so they are active, uh, they are active and they are, they are under high temperature and the decomposition becomes the faster rate and during that process many of the pathogens are get killed. Then acnomycetes such as the thermonspora, curvata and many fungi involved in cellular decompositions. Then preparation of sawdust compost that comes from the, the industry with inoculation of cellulitic fungi that is uh, coprinus femoris hasten the composting from 1 to 2 years to 3 months. That means, if the materials having high cellulose contents like the sawdust has very high CN ratio that is very very low N content, 
in that case you have to inoculate the waste materials with cellulolytic fungus so that the de degradation of this uh, materials become faster and the composting can be ready in a short time and coming to uh, next one that is uh, uh, the amendment with the rock minerals that means the application of the natural minerals the rock phosphate at 5 percent besides improving the phosphorus and n content also improve the micronutrient contents in the vermicompost. So, uh, this uh, rock minerals can be added during composting process at different doses also but that is seen that 5 percent gives one of the better results and uh, the rock phosphate with addition of the paddy straw along with inoculation of aspergillus niger and azotobacter trococum accelerates the process of composting and improves the nitrogen and phosphorus content of the compost. That means, by adding this uh, rock minerals along with the microorganisms like the aspergillus niger and the azotobacter cococum. So, they do accelerate the composting process at the same time they do improve the quality of uh, compost by enriching nitrogen and phosphorus. That means, so these are the some of the principles involved in composting process. So, we need to uh, um, see the what the because you have the different type of waste materials first waste material what type of waste material is there depending upon the CN ratio. If waste materials is very high in CN ratio then we have to add the waste materials have, having the higher N content so that the CN ratio can be lowered. Similarly, other cases you have the low CN ratio we add with the soil uh, 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 other materials so that the uh, nitrogen loss through ammonia volatilizations can be checked and the size of the materials the what size of the materials you can have moisture and the temperature should be maintained around 60 uh, maximum 80 percent moisture content should be maintained because the earth uh, the inside the microorganisms they live a comfortable environment and 50 to 60 percent moisture content and the temperature because temperature is a because initially temperature goes up uh, uh, the initial period of composting where the thermophilic bacteria they become active and this is required in a composting process as it kills many of the pathogens so that compo the compost can be pathogen free and using microbes and the amendment with rock minerals they, ca they can enrich the compost quality. And if you see the factors uh, uh, that is con controlling composting, so as you discussed one is your CN ratio that means the CN ratio that should be maintained 30 to 40 is to 1 the carbon and nitrogen ratio. Uh, so, uh, so, as you discussed depending upon the the type of the materials. So, CN ratio the, if it, if the because materials vary in the locations in the farm waste farm has many type of waste we have the straws rice straw wheat straw or the legume straws. So, if they can uh, can mix together we will try to see how we can we can maintain the CN ratio around 30 to 40. So, that the, the this is required for the proper growth of the microbes because microbes they need nitrogen for the for their own growth and multiplications and to have their own, own growth and multiplications we need to maintain at least the required amount of nitrogen. So, that in a, the there is a comfortable environment for the microbial organisms for their growth. Then particle size that we discussed particle size is 3 to 5 centimeter because this particle size if you have the small particles that increases the surface area of the particles and so that the microbial activity will be faster the decomposition will become become the faster with the, the smaller particle size. Then moisture content so 50 to 60 percent moisture content that should be maintained uh, during the process of composting because uh, 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 high moisture content there will be less of if you increase the moisture content there will be divided of oxygen. So, microorganism may not survive in the less oxygen the oxygen requirement around 10 to 18 percent oxygen to maintain the oxygen and the moisture content should be 50 to 60 percent throughout the composting process for the uh, Mm, better growth because we need to uh, maintain the population of microbes microbial growth so that they can work faster they can degrade the the organic organic waste for the decomposition process temperature so that we are discussing that should be 55 to 60 degrees celsius for at least 3 days this is very very important in the composting process because and to make the uh, the compost free of pathogens there should not be any cellular species or e coli species or the tape work hookworm. So, many pathogens they are get they get killed the temperature above 50 or 55 degrees Celsius. So, maintenance of temperature at least 55 degrees Celsius and the higher for at least 
3 days it is really essential, essential in the composting process and it is very natural when you go for the uh, compost and the mixing with the uh, cow dung, fresh cow dung and loaded in the beds. So, initial period of composting the temperature increases and it may go up to 70 degrees Celsius. So, that is helpful for killing many of the pathogens. pH control, pH control as you discussing this not necessary because it is auto regulated because pH uh, comes down because formation of the, the acid forming bacteria. Also, pH goes up when there is a release of uh, breakdown of the organic compounds and release of ammonia then pH goes up. So, pH is uh, regulated uh, auto regulated in the compost, uh, compost pit around 6.5 to 7.5. Hip size, hip size can be any length because length is not an issue. So, it should be 2.5 meter wide and 1.5 meter high height because uh, the 2.5 meter wide we make because for proper uniformity in the compost making. And we can we can judge the compost quality yeah, with the width of 2.5 meter and height should be uh, not more than 1.5 meter. If you increase the height even 1 meter height also convenient. If you increase the height of the uh, hips then it, it becomes a anaerobic decompositions. So, uh, um, because many of the organisms and the aerobic organ they may not survive in the anaerobic conditions to have a proper aerations. So, hip size should be less than 1.5 meter and the activators use efficient cellulitic fungi because for this uh, accelerating the process of composting for the or enriching the compost with specific nutrients or uh, nutrients we can go for the uh, use efficient cellulitic fungi that uh, as we discussed earlier that can be inoculated during composting process so that the compost can be made quicker. So, uh, uh, if you see the quality the, the properties of good quality compost these are the, uh, the compost uh, depending upon the type of the organic, organic materials and depending upon the microorganism presence and depending on the environments that depends the time taken for the composting process. In general the compost is judged based on this parameter color, smell, pH. A uh, CN ratio, temperature, moisture, humus content, and nitrogen contents. The color that is a good quality compost is so a brown to black, and the poor quality it may have the different colors. And if the, if the compost is ready and mature, is a pleasant. The smell is there is no smell, you can no smell or add this smell in case of the poor quality, uh, it gives a bad odor because of the poor decomposition. That means the compost is not the material is not decomposed in that case you can have the odor or the smell. If the material is fully decomposed there is a no smell or add this smell or very pleasant smell you can get from the, the final compost. So, pH for the good quality between 6.5 to 8 and for the poor quality it may be less than 6 or may be higher than 8 that means the compost is not well decomposed. The compost is not well matured in that case the pH may vary from less than 6 to and may be higher than 8. And the CN ratio of the good quality may be 10 to 20 is to 1 and in case of the poor quality CN ratio may be less than 10 or higher than 20. The temperature of the, the final compost may be 30 to 45 degrees Celsius and for the poor quality may be high temperature that means this, this compost is not deco decomposed. The compost is not well decomposed the temperature may be 40, 40 or may be higher than 45 degrees Celsius. Moisture content around 25 to 30 percent for the good quality compost and the humus should be more than 4 percent and the nitrogen at least the main nutrient as you say nitrogen that should be more than higher than 1.5 percent. So, these are the uh, qualities when you go for the lab analysis we can check the quality of the compost and this quality can be maintained depending upon the, the input materials what type of materials are used and the depending upon the input materials we can think of what type of materials can be mixed together so that we can maintain one optimum CN ratio. If you can maintain the, the input to the C optimum CN ratio and the proper environment during the composting process as you discussed the moisture temper temperatures and addition of the microbial inoculants as per the need of the organic waste. So, we can get a uh, good quality compost and that can that can fit as your requirement and that can fit the uh, several uh, in general for uh, many crops and then you can add, go on adding enriching for specific crops. Okay. Uh, so, uh, these are the qualities of good compost. Uh, so, if you uh, prepare your the waste materials and the conditions inside the compost bed, we can get a quality which can meet the requirement for this organic farming. And uh, we will discuss now the finally. So, what is the benefits of the compost application? If you see the benefits of compost, 
Compost is a storehouse of energy for growth and multiplication of microbes and their activity in soil which is vital for plant nutrient cycling. It supplies both macro and micronutrients. Then it provides the growth promoting substances which stimulates early plant growth and it acts as a soil conditioner uh, as it improves the physical condition of soil such as soil tilth. Soil tilth means it is a equal proportion of macro and the micropores. Then that influences the water holding capacity of soils, of course, cut exchange capacity. So, that is the, those are regulated with having the high the adding the uh, compost. The compost it is a pathogen free as all the pathogens are killed at high temperature, then it increases the biological activity of soils and produce crops uh, growth with the less disease because addition of compost is a pathogen free, it can give a disease free or the pest free environments. So, these are the some of the benefits of compost applications. Uh, so, while making the compost and the applying, so you should be very careful and the, uh, meeting the principles of the compost preparation. Okay, thank you.